Hey everyone, as I am still getting over my flu, I decided to share um, this tea recipe that I have been making uh, lately and I really really enjoyed it and I feel like it helps my um, you know voice and throat and that sort of a thing. So um, as a base I'm using this Marks and Spencer's immune support tea. It has some coconut and turmeric in there and a few other bits and pieces and I find that it tastes really lovely on its own but I just like to add a few things just to make it a bit extra potent with vitamins. So I had a few slices of ginger go in there and now a few thick uh, slices of lemon that I squeeze out and make sure the juices go into the tea so I can actually um, consume them when I drink the tea. I also had a few extra kumquats left and they didn't taste great. I don't know whether they're not in season or something. Mm -hmm. Last time I had them I don't think they tasted uh, that bitter. But I didn't want to throw them away, so I decided to utilize them in the tea. And again, I sliced them up to make sure the juices go into the tea with the goodness and the vitamins. And it actually added a nice, uh, fresh flavor. Kumquat comes from the citrus family, and so it just gives another great little dimension to the lemon flavor. It's not too distinct, but I think that it definitely um, was a good addition. And then we have yet another Marks and Spencer's product and uh, it happens to be this turmeric and ginger British honey but I'm sure you can find any other um, version. I think I just like it because it has those two uh, ingredients in there which I already have in the tea so it, it just kind of makes it a bit more uh, rich in flavor and um, just you know more of the good it's uh it becomes this sort of very uh vitamin heavy drink and then just the hot water goes in as you'll see in a minute there's loads and loads of things floating around but once you put that um sipping cup on top it doesn't interfere in the drinking it just stays in the cup and I let the tea brew for a few minutes before I drink it and it tastes so nice and refreshing. It has that zingy kind of uplifting flavor and it's not too strong and um, for me it just tastes really nice. In fact I'm drinking the exact tea as I'm doing the voiceover as well. Here is a little snack I made myself. This is a chicken schnitzel with panko breadcrumbs, some rocket and spinach leaves on top. And then we also have roasted pepper with cream cheese. Now it's time to take a few minutes to relax, enjoy the rest of the tea and kind of snuggling in with my blanket that I finished crocheting a week ago and flipping through a book that is not very easy to kind of do that with because it's so thick but I find that there is a um, number of classic artists that give you so much inspiration and I was looking through a color palette and um, yeah, you will see a couple of paintings that I felt quite um, drawn to. This painting is by Henry Rosso and it's called The Football Players. Then we have a painting by Edward Monet 
and it's called Madame Manet on a blue sofa and finally and these two paintings, um, Boating and the Grand Canal in Venice, also by Edouard Manet. So you can see all of these paintings have a very significant colour palette in mind, the blues with the warm tones. Here I'm reminding myself of a few colour palettes and brush marks I have made earlier, and this is where kind of I'm heading. This was the first day I returned to my studio after taking a few days off. I really was not feeling great with the flu and in fact I had lost my voice for two days um, and then you know a mix of different symptoms so this was like the first day that I thought I actually want to um, go to my studio get comfortable and just start painting. I had this easel up now for a little bit and um, yeah, had to kind of um, take a little break. So we are basically looking at me creating an underpainting. So as you would typically in a watercolor, well in some paintings you would create a underpainting, so a little layer of paint so i'm treating this as an underpainting because my intention here is to start layering different mediums different types of paints different colors um, and brush marks and all sorts of textures but treat it not as a finished painting but as an underpainting so on top uh, there will be more um, things that go on so in a way this is just prepping the paper or canvas so to speak and adding a little bit of something that I will be able to work over the top I had the idea of creating an abstract background or underpainting with some sort of botanical um, elements but I'm not sure if this is where I'm going to go because I have been toying with the idea whether I should add some green as to represent the botanical elements or whether I should just kind of stay true to um, my feeling and go with the blues like I showed the um, color inspiration or the color palette from the book before I still quite fancy this sort of uh, blue small sprinkles of color and as you will see there won't be any blue as this is still just the beginning of the painting and layering the colors that um, I think would look lovely with the blue and um, so I'm just adding different textures creating these drip effects and really just kind of painting intuitively not thinking too much and um, the good thing about it is that once things fully dry I will be able to go over and work over the areas that I think I don't like as much and um, so it doesn't really matter if I feel like I have, in a way, messed up something. There is no messing up. There is just the, the beginning of the painting and then there will be the kind of the 
the midpoint and then the finishing touches right at the end so I kind of separated in my mind into three stages and it helps me to deviate from that kind of negative aspect of thinking you know will this be a failure or will I ruin the painting I'm just going with it and knowing that I will be painting over so there will be plenty of opportunity to in a way you know correct um, areas that I'm not loving too much So far I have been using a number of different mediums, I've used the acrylic uh, gouache, I've used oil sticks and some I think heavy body acrylics and acrylic ink and then I was sort of swapping between a thick lay of a paint and also watering things down creating those kind of driplets and um, like a watercolor element to it and to do that with I used one of the catalyst tools and that means basically I'm just you know spreading paint over the paper it's not going into a brush it's not dissolving with water it's just really thickly laid I can also spread it out and create some lovely textures of dry brushing on the textured paper um, I'm using the Canson Heritage paper here, the, I think it was 300 GSM, so really nice quality paper and it's got a lovely little tooth to it, it's a cold press. And um, now I'm just using, I think these are the hog bristle brushes with long handles, so they're great for this type of um, easel work as they allow you to hold the brush a bit further back and create more loose more abstract uh, marks and the bristles are really dry so that gives me another dimension of paint and before that I used the Hake brush so the bristles there are so soft you can use it like a makeup brush uh, for powder or something it just feels like a bunny's pole on your face super super soft which lends to absorbing a lot of water and basically creating these loose washes and that resembles a lot watercolor and how watercolor is used so it's um, a lot of fun using these kind of mixed media um, art supplies and just building over one um, and then you know adding again some on the top of the other and just seeing how they interact I really like that particularly so not just using one um, art supply and leaving it but building on top of each other and mixing with still a bit of you know wet acrylic and going in with the oil paints and just kind of creating that lovely um, mix of mediums and treating the paper like a palette in a way
so far the composition isn't fully there but I wanted to let this dry fully because oil paints or those oil sticks they will take up to a couple of days to dry and that's what I wanted to do before I start um, kind of uh, adding things on top and yeah so the composition will change slightly as the painting will continue to evolve next time we will be doing exactly that so i hope you enjoy this video thanks for watching and i'll see you next time